ladies and gentlemen just give me a moment i i want to i want to take the moment to talk to y'all for a second because uh I, you know what i feel l l ladies and gentlemen don't be offended ladies and gentlemen Now, I don't get offended. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Got something I want to say. I don't want to become famous. I don't make a dime off of any of this. But I, I do need y'all to know, I, I simply, I don't care. I, D, C. When y'all hear me talking, <laughs> I'm not even talking to you. I'm talking to, I, well, who am I talking to? Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm talking to them. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, that's Jethro. If y'all don't know who Jethro is, man, Jethro is who Jethro is. Okay? Now, I got something I want to say. And I do this from time to time. I just go about saying things to people. The system has been messing with my consults. Yeah. Now, let me explain something to you. Go ahead and look throughout YouTube, you don't see anybody doing videos on helping you guys create motions and things with the AI models. But I do. Only one. But somebody's been watching the videos and complaining to them companies. And these people who've been watching the videos and complaining to these companies got some power. Because now you ask ChatGPT for case law, that man, he gives you all kind of everything wrong. Used to be 40% of the case citations he would give you would be incorrect would literally be junky made up. Now I'm looking at 97% of the case citations he produces to be completely fabricated. And I put it through perplexity and perplexity says, <laughs> literally says none of the information you provided has appeared in the search results. They appear to be a bunch of fabricated <laughs> case citations. And so, I'm saying to myself, really? So that's how they want to play. Ladies and gentlemen, Chat GP is Chat GPT, OpenAI. Their piece of junk is not the only thing in the system. So stop using it for that purpose. You can use it to create emotion. That's the only thing it's good for. Chat GPT is not good for anything else. It can't create code. All of the mistakes it has in the code, you got to understand there are industries out there that are more powerful than Chat GPT. See, ChatGPT doesn't want to be sued by anybody. So guess what ChatGPT does? It helps out the courts. It helps out the attorneys, and they give it a pass. They buy their legal services. The courts are a business. They sell legal services all the time. That's why you lose in court. Because you haven't paid enough for the services. You didn't know? Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all need to pay attention. I know, I know, it doesn't seem right. And, and, and it's impossible. They can't do that. Well, let me tell you what they can't do. Somebody mentioned something to me yesterday. Do you know how many black men are being found hung in trees throughout the United States? And they're all being reported as suicide? And nobody's doing an investigation on these murders? No, okay, maybe one or two black men in a decade will hang themselves from a tree. Ladies and gentlemen, black men do not think to go hang themselves from trees. They never thought to hang themselves from trees. Who was that that came up with the idea of hanging a person of color from a tree? Don't, uh -uh, don't answer me. I ain't going to give you the answer. Go back and look at history. And they're finding these individuals throughout the country being hung from trees, and nobody is doing any investigation.
the police are just closing the case. I guess the blue line, purple line, green line, all them lines that they got, walls, lines, whatever they got, that's how they do things. And her America. So, if they can, on national TV, kill a man in front of you, we're not just talking about Mr. Floyd, we're not talking about Mr. Gardner, we're talking about all of them. We've given the police a license to kill in this country. Why? Well, they have to defend themselves. It's a very dangerous job. Ain't nobody saying nothing about the danger of the job. If they get fired upon, hey, return evil for evil is their policy. I don't have nothing to say about the policy, ladies and gentlemen. What I have something to say about is the level of which the aggression is taken because we teach murder in this country. You see, you shoot at the police. I don't believe, I don't like, I don't care about guns. Don't. I don't care to have them around me. I don't care to have them near me. They bother me greatly. So I'm not a gun person. I'm not an anti-gun person, but I am not a gun person. I do not advocate guns. I don't care if it's for hunting. You don't need a gun for hunting. They didn't use guns for hunting in the 12th century, I mean, 12th century, 3rd century, 4th century. Okay? So, no, you don't need a gun to hunt. Well, bow and arrows, a whole lot more. I didn't ask about that. We're not going to go into that atrocentric stupidity. Okay, this is not that type of conversation. Go have it with your mama. Go have it with your grandmama. Go have it with somebody, but don't have it with me because I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to them. Okay? In this country, we have desensitized individuals on murder and death. It started with slavery. They would kill people in front of people and people would sit and watch <laughs> that is amazing they would have afternoon sessions where they would kill people in front of people and it was somehow seen civilized oh yes let's hang him what are you hanging him for well he um he was outside the city limits and it was after dark and he didn't have his papers, so he must be hung. Really, you're going to hang him for being outside the city limits. Uh, was anybody else outside the city limits? Yes, but they had papers. Oh, so you need papers to go outside the city limits, so then this is not a free country? Free country? Of course it's free. Then why do you need papers? Oh, well, that's because we also have these indentured servants. And they're indentured servants. And because they're indentured servants, they are not permitted to be. Oh, so you need a permit to be outside. That's exactly right. You need to be permitted to do anything here in this country. And if you choose not to, then you die. That's America. And we kid ourselves for thinking it's anything but. They put violence on television, so we are desensitized. We see violence every day. That's why we can see what's going on over in Israel and Palestine. And we turn the other way as if it's no big deal. Tell me, how many times have you heard the news about what's going on over there? And you just, oh well. See, it's okay to do it to them, the people who I'm talking to. but. When it hits home, it ain't okay. It's okay as long as it's happening to somebody else. If that is your thinking, then you need to readjust your thinking because you have been brainwashed. That's right, you heard me. You have been brainwashed and you don't even know it. And you have literally taught yourself that you can't be brainwashed. You literally believe that everybody else can be brainwashed, but not you. And if you've been desensitized when it comes to violence, that you can see violence, accept violence. Whew. I was watching uh, Mike Tyson the other day when he was younger. Man, 
Mike Tyson didn't start using elbows until he was getting towards that championship. Prior to that, he wasn't using elbows. He was knocking mother <clears throat> out. And But I was watching the brutality. They called him Iron Mike, and they loved him because he was Iron Mike. They loved him for his level of violence. But once they couldn't control this violent man, and that's what they portrayed him as, that's how he got convicted for something he wasn't guilty of. Okay? He was portrayed as violent, and so he must have done what they said he did. That's why he got convicted. He didn't get convicted because there was evidence. He got convicted because of his reputation. But nobody, well, only a few people knew this. He had a tax agent representing him as his attorney. A tax attorney, people, representing him in a murder trial. I mean, a, a rape trial. Come on now. Somebody please help me with this because I don't understand this world. That's what the system does. They come after you. And all they need to do is bring a claim. See, many of you guys don't know that they, these idiots in 2018 charged me with placing false evidence on the record. And when I demanded to see that so-called altered evidence, they quickly changed the story to something else. They changed the story three times. Changed the story three times, then blocked my right to appeal. That's the second case they blocked my right to appeal on. Imagine that, huh? Second case. <sighs> this is America. So don't you dare believe that this isn't personal. Now, that's not what I wanted to talk about today. Okay, we're going to leave all that stuff behind. We're going to talk about, I had three consults. I'm going to talk about three consults. One consult, I told the young man, I said, here, this is what you need to do. And I spent time preparing the motions for the young man. And now this was before ChatGPT messed things up. We went over the motions. I told him, you need to go and clear these up, need to proofread them, and told him exactly what he needed to be adding. We did that, did a video, everything. He had everything he needed. And then after we did the consult, a couple of days later, he says, oh, no, I'm not going to file those documents you told me to file. No, 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 no. I really do appreciate it. I t appreciate you taking the time. But uh, it's the other information we talked about that I was interested in getting more so than helping with the case. I got the case. You know, I, I know I can handle the case. I, I can handle them. I said, sir, you cannot handle them. I said, you don't even see what they're getting ready to do to you. But I do see what they're getting ready to do to you. And what I've done is have you put these motions in on the record to prevent them from doing it? Oh, no, 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 no. See, I paid this guy $1,000, and, 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 and he's been filing papers for me on the record. He's been filing. What type of papers has he been filing on the record? And he listed some of them. I said, that doesn't have anything to do with this case. You can't file. Oh, God. And you paid him $1,000? Yeah, some of you guys are out there paying people thousands of dollars to file junk on the record. Affidavit of truth. The moment you hear that word, you need to walk away. There's no such thing as an affidavit of truth. The moment you hear about this piece of junk called an affidavit of truth, you need to walk away because that's somebody who doesn't even know what the law is. They don't even know what an affidavit is. Ladies and gentlemen, go look up the definition, legal definition of affidavit. And you'll see it's a truthful statement signed under penalty or declaration witness firsthand, i.e. truth. So there cannot be an affidavit of truth because to imply there's an affidavit of truth would mean that an affidavit could be otherwise. An affidavit must be the truth. It must be witness firsthand. God, an affidavit is testimony, people. That's why an unrebutted affidavit stands true in commerce, not in law. Don't worry about it. Everybody else is smarter than me. So that gentleman who I told, he says, well, no, I think I got this. I think I can handle this. I said, okay. Two weeks later, he sends me a copy of a letter from the attorney that they put on him. Now, I, I did the substitution of attorney, told him what he needed to do. <laughs> he gave him a motion. He didn't listen to me. He says he could handle this attorney. 
I told him they were playing you. He talked about how nice they appeared in court. I said, that's a game. They are not being nice. They are sitting up there manipulating you. Yeah, I could see it. I could tell. But I got this. I can handle this. Okay. Here it is two weeks later. He gets a letter. <laughs> Hooey. It's a short letter, one paragraph. They done told him exactly what they're getting ready to do to him. Exactly what I told him they were getting ready to do. And still he can't see it. The problem is I'm not going to walk him through it because I'm not his attorney. He he got this. He can handle this. Lord have mercy. Spoke to another gentleman. Did a consult with him. Told him, he said, hey, 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 hey. You're going to have to do this. You're going to have to do this. Well, the judge is, you know, the judge is racist and all that. I don't care if the judge is racist. The judge has certain rules that he must follow that you guys aren't aware of. This has nothing to do with the rules of the court. It has nothing to do with the rules of ethics. The judge, he doesn't control anything. He is doing what he is told. There is a system. And if you know the system that the judges are operating under and you know what their stupid rules are, how do you think the judge in the state of New Mexico ended up being demoted to a family court judge and then two years later having to retire? All because of a simple letter bringing up some of those policies. But this person told me, no, the attorney, I'm going to uh, defer to the attorney. I keep hearing people, they're going to defer to the attorney. Now, look, I'm a stranger. I'm a stranger. I come into people's homes whenever they click on that button. So they don't know me. They think they know me, but they don't know me. So I'm a stranger. But they would rather trust that attorney, an idiot who has no license to practice law. Go ahead. Ask any attorney, where is your license to practice law? Well, we don't really actually have licenses. So there is no such thing as a license to practice law? No, there is no such thing as a license to practice law. Ladies and gentlemen, Practicing law without a license, pay attention, is a legal term. There is no such thing as a license to practice law. No one has a license to practice law. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Once you understand these little intricacies, then you understand. Most people don't understand. They're like them parents. <sighs> Anywho, I had another consult where the individual told me, well, look, I've been trying this and I've been trying that and I done paid all this money to all these other people and then you don't want to explain everything to me. I said, because you have to do your own research. That's the reason why you keep trying everything. You're trying things thinking that it's all going to be free. You need to understand this before you can use this. This is not something you do just to be doing. If you don't know what you're doing, they will be able to tell you don't know what they're doing and you won't get success. But when you come at this from a standpoint as though y'all can't play that game with me, I know exactly what I'm doing and I know what my rights are, then you don't get the same response. Ladies and gentlemen, let me let you know, I don't get the same response as y'all get. When I go at these idiots and I write what I write, they know what I'm about. I don't get the same responses you get. So I'm trying to teach you how to get the responses you deserve by doing your research specifically on something. Did I not tell you guys in 2021 that I was gonna focus on tax credits and show you guys how to obtain that? Well, the individual asked me about that and I was telling him and do you know he interrupted me several times? He says, well, you understand this because you've been doing this. I haven't done anything, ladies and gentlemen. I'm too busy doing videos and operating companies and trying to help people that I can't even do stuff for myself. God, I can't do anything for myself. Okay? So, no, I haven't been doing nothing. I've only been talking about it because I don't have time to do it. Sorry. He assumed, and that's okay. So he, he told me that I wasn't giving all the evidence, all the information. And I said, do you know how long it would take for me to explain everything to you? I said, that's why this is not a tutorial. This is not a mentorship. This is a consultation. You tell me what a problem is, and I give you answers, solutions, 
things that you can try to resolve the problem, but I give you more than one. That's what a consultation is. I, I said, I've never promised to sit up here and teach you guys how to do something. Now, look, if you contact me and you're trying to do something, you have a process that you're trying to complete, I will by all means point you in the right direction, but it's not my job to help you complete your processes. That is selfish on your part. Why? Because you know everybody else is going to charge you up the yin-yang to help you complete your process. Go ahead. All of the companies do it. Why? Well, look, here's the thing. Microsoft, Sunno, all the companies out there that you mess with, if you have an idea and you bring your idea to them, they're going to charge you to provide you the solution to your idea, i.e., copyright. If you use their services to create anything, they retain ownership rights. So in other words, you're going to pay them for your solution, and they're going to limit how you get to use the solution. Ta-da! So any place else you go, somebody's going to charge you. I don't charge you for that, but I'm not here to help you become rich. That's what you want to be. I don't care about you becoming rich. I care about if you have a problem, being able to help you resolve it a little bit to get rid of some of the stress. So ladies and gentlemen, don't take it personal because it ain't personal. All right, then I had a young lady. We were doing a consult, ladies and gentlemen. And ChatGPT, I mean, I got it recorded. ChatGPT took the information and nothing happened with ChatGPT. We didn't close it out or anything. I just went to another one of the GPT models. And I came back to ChatGPT and the whole conversation, the three motions we created were all gone. But here's the problem. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we recorded the whole thing. I went back looking for it four times because that's never happened. Where the rest of the conversation is there, literally, pay attention, the rest of the conversation we had. But the three motions we created, the 45 minutes it took to explain to her everything and how the motions were being created, they're gone, ladies and gentlemen. Now I got to go back through the video and redo those motions for her. But they get to be better now because, hey, <laughs> chat GPT. So be aware of chat GPT and the stupidity of chat GPT. Now, ladies and gentlemen, every consult for the past two weeks has been interfered with. Every single consult, only the consult, literally have interfered with the consult. I do believe it's an AI hacking of the system. I don't believe it's a person hacking of the system, and I think it's to discourage people from getting consults. But look, the show will go on. I have three computers and plus a handheld device. I can always switch from one to the other if I have a problem, and people have seen me do that. One individual got so frustrated yesterday, I had to let him know, look, you don't have time for us to do this again. We're going to be here for at least three hours. So what we're going to do, we're going to keep on pressing on. And we literally only have one little glitch from that point on to the end of the consult. So for the next two hours, no problem. <sighs> it's a wonderful world and a wonderful system. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to follow these suggestions given by me during a consult. You don't have to follow the advice given by me during the consult. There's no law requiring you to do that. Okay, but please do not contact me saying, well, I didn't listen to you and this happened and that happened because I will tell you, I told you that was going to happen. I-T-Y-S, I told you so. Oh yeah, I'll do that because now you're coming to me crying, talking about, look at what happened, look at what they did. And I'm like, wait a minute, didn't I tell you that's what they were going to do? Well, yeah, but then you don't, <laughs> don't care. So don't take it personal. Don't don't take it personal, because I don't care. Look, since I was eight years old, I was giving advice to adults, giving advice to adults on their relationships with their wives and girlfriends. I don't kid you when I say that. I'm not giving you any other picture than the one you are seeing. I was Dr. Phil at the age of eight with all of my friends in school and with my relatives and other adults in my neighborhood. 
they would come and they would talk to me and give me their problems and I would offer them solutions and suggestions. I've been doing this since I was eight years old and I don't kid you, I am I promise you with all of my heart, <sighs> I am not making this up. My cousins, I told you I love my cousin Edna. Edna Allen, no, not no Edgar Allen, Edna Allen, we called her Pee Wee. Pee Wee was my favorite cousin. There was just something about Pee Wee. She was, you know, one of the nicest people in the world. And she appreciated me. Let me tell you something. We used to sit and we used to talk from time to time. It was her husband that used to come talk to me <laughs> about the problems. <laughs> and so uh, not just her husband. Uh, we also had uh, a young man. His name was Richard. And he was trying to court my mother. And my mother wasn't having it. And so he would come talk to me. And then we had people in my neighborhood who would come talk to me about their problems. Ladies and gentlemen, it was not just those immediate members in the neighborhood and family. It was when I would be on those buses and individuals would hear me talking to the other gentlemen about the things we would talk about, about the economy and stuff. Then they would sit on a bus and then they would run issues by me and ideas by me and problems they were having at work and all of that stuff. I've been doing this for a while. You don't have to listen to me. Look, here's the thing. When we're having a consult, I had one person, her name is Robin. Robin sent someone to me who had done, pay attention, the Chapter 11 thing. Chapter 11, at the sole proprietor. But he added more paperwork. I'll tell you this. I cannot tell you what other paperwork he added, but the court, the court, bankruptcy court, made him a secure party creditor. Yeah, yeah, the real secure party creditor, not that junk y'all doing. Because he completed the process. All of y'all haven't completed the process. That man gained control of the securities held in his minor account, but he didn't even realize it. But you know what she told him? She says, look. He is going to help you for free. He's not going to charge you. The only thing he requires is that you tell him everything, that you treat him as if he's an attorney, that he's not going to tell it to anybody else, that he needs to know what's going on exactly as he told you so that he can provide the best assistance. You know, the guy withheld so much stuff. And I told him, I, I'm not working with him. I said, the first thing about it is he is withholding information on purpose because he thinks he knows more than I do. He thinks I'm trying to get information out of him when he already admitted he listened to my video from 2012 about going into chapter 11 and that's how he ended up there in the first place. Like he is teaching me something. No, 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 no. tell him I'll, I'll give him the information. No, 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 tell him uh, what had happened was uh, it was like so much paperwork. Uh, 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 uh. I told her no. Tell him he could have explained all of that then, but he didn't. He sent me only this, and he did that on purpose. I said, so you tell him no. Oh, he was all kind of wanting to get help after that, willing to share everything. I don't give a fuck what you're willing to share. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't need your information. I'm the one giving information for free. Why do I want your information? If you know more than me, like I've said, then you don't need to be watching my videos because you're smarter than me and you're beautiful, and you're special, maybe you need a piece of apple pie along with some chocolate pie. Just maybe. If you're smarter than me, then don't take it personal. You don't need me. I just told you about a young man who literally told me that the guy who was doing paperwork for him was smarter than I was, that had been dealing with the courts longer than I have, that has had more success with the courts than I have, Then if he's had more success with the courts than you have, where's that proof? See, I've had people watch me go through the courts. They were with me from when they first started messing with me, and they saw... Oh, man, if only I'm laughing because if only you people could know what I do to them. I rip them apart from the inside. 
You want to sit up here and mess with my life? You want to interfere with my life? Fine. Put me in there. I ain't going to fight you. I ain't going to argue with you. I'm not going to try to bail out. We going to do this. I told you, I've been kicked out of three different jail facilities. Literally taking my stuff, putting it outside, saying, you got 24 hours to pick this junk up or we throwing it in the trash. That was what they said in Puerto Rico. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, that was that was fun. I just smiled at him. Look, that's what you do to people. I, hey, I always told people when I saw Die Hard with Bruce Willis, the very first one, the Nakatomi Center, <clears throat> when Hans is sitting up there kicking, we'll get to you. No, I'm not closing Google. Skip. Where Hans is kicking things and he's throwing things and he's just so upset. And the wife of John says to her co-worker, uh, no, no, no. Uh, the co-worker says to her, he must be really upset. Somebody must have really pissed him off. She says, yeah, that's John. He says, who is John? My husband. He says, really? Yeah, only John could do that to someone. Something to that effect. The only John could do that to someone was the, the thing that I liked out of the whole movie. No, no, no. You need to understand. I, I went to the theater and saw Die Hard. I was one of those people, the first to see Die Hard type persons. I liked Bruce Willis since he did Moonlighting. But watched, I watched everything he's done up until this junk he started to do lately because I knew that something was wrong with Bruce Willis. I could tell something was wrong with him. I could tell by the movies he was doing. He was going through what I go through, and it's called aphasia. I understand that. So I saw that about him, and I was very disappointed. It, but they used him, ladies and gentlemen. They didn't care about that man. They used him. They needed him to fulfill contracts. So they just put him in a movie so they could make money off of his name. That's our world, ladies and gentlemen. Well, anyway, what he did to Hans in that movie, like I said, the only thing that that whole movie did for me, I didn't care about none of that other stuff. I didn't care about none of the other yippee ki and not, dang, none of that junk meant anything to me other than the fact that only John could do that to someone. That's all I cared about in the whole movie. That's why I've always talked about that one scene. Why? Because that's what people have said about me. Oh, God. That's why I tell you, they mess with me. I ripped them apart from the inside. I've done it to every... And you put me in a jail facility? Man, I, I told you, I had the officers cleaning my cell every day. Okay? I told them. I said, you guys need to leave me alone. This was the second time I had to, well, it was, a, it was a county jail facility. I told the first officer, you need to leave me alone. I don't bother nobody. Uh, am I my own business? So you're not in my league. You need to leave me alone. That, that, was, that was the first thing. And that officer never said another thing to me after he decided to act a fool in front of me after I told him to leave me alone. He never bothered me again after I checked him in front of everybody. Then when they put me in that jail facility, these officers thought they could handle me too. I said, look, guys, you need to leave me alone. I don't bother nobody. I stick to myself. I mind my own business. You need to leave me alone. We're not leaving you alone. Blah, 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 blah. I said, okay, but I warned you. Ladies and gentlemen, I was in the deputy warden's office at least twice a week. Them trying to <laughs> get me to stop what I was doing. Because all I did was went through their stupid policies and I said, oh no, your policy says you must do this. So I ain't seeing y'all do this. So I'm doing a grievance on that. Oh, and look at this. You're supposed to be doing this too. Oh, and then you're putting me in isolation. You know, them cells got to be cleaned every day. I have a right to a clean habitat. No, y'all supposed to be doing that. I ain't supposed to be cleaning up. Well, there you go. Y'all are my servants. So now we're going to make you all do your job. You want to play with me? Let's play. So. The lead officer came to me and said, look, sir, what can we do to put an end to this? I said, I told you all to leave me alone. I told your officers to leave me alone. And you decided that as a group, you were going to cause me more problems. I asked you again, leave me alone. And you decided that you were going to continue to cause me problems. So what did I do? 
I introduce myself to you. So you leave me alone and all of this goes away. I won't insist. Oh, you should you should have seen the guys in there. Man, you said this was going to happen. I said, I know I told you this was going to happen. I told them to leave me alone. They didn't leave me alone. The officers, look, they couldn't go and sit around and talk because, see, officers are supposed to be doing something the entire time they're in there. That's See, they just do their rounds. They just walk when they're supposed to walk. But other than that, they're sitting around talking. The way the prison is run, the officers don't have time to sit around and talk. They have duties that they have to take care of every single day. That's why they hire trustees to help with that duty. But they're supposed to be monitoring the trustees. There is so much going on that most people in those facilities don't know. But I knew because I worked for the federal government that they have policies that they must follow. And those policies are eccentric. Those policies require them to do all kinds of stuff. Okay, that they normally don't do. And that's how I checked them. Like I said, every facility, including Puerto Rico. So I don't, when I say I allow them to put me in there, I'm not joking with you. I could have bailed out every single time. I could have said one thing in a California case that would have gotten me released and the case dismissed. But I chose, well, I didn't choose. Someone else chose for me. I told you I had to go through that, and that's why it was necessary. And so I knew that I was going to be going through that in advance, and I prepared people. But enough about that. Let's get back to the root cause of this video. I can't explain to you, other than Jehovah, why I know what I know. Because only he knows. I can't explain to you, ladies and gentlemen, why I am as good as I am with the things that I do. Come up. You see how I'm always speaking and doing AI junk and speaking into computers? Because I said comma, as if I was writing a motion or a letter. That's how often I do that. I can't explain it to you. But one thing I can explain, this is the real purpose of doing this video. So don't take it personal, ladies and gentlemen. For the past three days, let's make this larger so y'all can see. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, gout is a metabolic disorder that causes inflammation in the joints. And some muscular dystrophies can present symptoms that may be misdiagnosed as rheumatic disease, arthritis. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have gout, I have muscular dystrophy, but at least every couple of years, I get to experience what people who have gout experience, not for the same reasons, not for the same reasons. It is a very painful experience. So if you've known anybody who's had gout, tell them I feel for them. I feel for you. Don't worry about it. I have a remedy for it. Do not do keep your junk to yourself. It's not gout. I apologize. It only displays symptoms. Pay attention. That can present symptoms that may be misdiagnosed. Everybody keeps trying to tell me what they think will help me, and you don't know what's going on. You only know the little bit I tell you. It's not gout. It's the only way to explain it is to tell you about it is the same symptoms as gout, but it is not gout, people. It's muscular dystrophy. The doctors have diagnosed me with skeletal arthritis. Skeletal, meaning the entire body, the entire skeletal system. I have joint pain all the time. It's not arthritis, people. It's muscular dystrophy. My doctors literally told me that I would not be walking by the age of 35. Ha <laughs> ha, I didn't stop not walking till the age of 54. Or was it 53? Don't know. It was so long ago. 
That was only three years ago. No, but the, the three years is a long time. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it took me seven months to get out of that stupid wheelchair. I'm not in a wheelchair anymore. I don't even, because the doctors finally realized what was causing my back pain and a couple other things. They, one doctor finally realized it and fitted me with a foot brace. I didn't think it was going to work. I see people with braces all the time. Hey, give these idiots some credit. These doctors who come up with these braces, because ever since I started wearing that brace, I ain't had no back pain. I ain't had to use no back. Uh, I had that back gun, that massager. I ain't had to use that. Well, every once in a while, I do have to use it, but I only do that for maintenance because I don't have to have nobody help me adjust my back or anything now. All because of that stupid little ankle brace. I wish they would have had that technology around when I was a kid. That could have stopped me a whole lot of pain. Ladies and gentlemen, glossine storage disease manifests as gout and myopathy. So please understand, ladies and gentlemen. Please understand, it's not gout! Sorry. I apologize. <laughs> because when I explain it to people, they keep giving me remedies for gout. Now, let's do this. What autoimmune diseases causes gout? Let's do that. Gout is an inflammatory disorder, but it is not an autoimmune condition. Gout is caused by high blood levels of uric acid that the body cannot excrete properly. These uric acids, crystals, can deposit in the, I don't know that word, so I ain't even going to try to pronounce it, tissues causing inflammation and pain. Rheumatoid arthritis, RA, is an autoimmune inflammatory condition. I don't have either. I have muscular dystrophy. Okay, and I almost feel like talking like Steve in Malcolm in the middle because people don't understand. Sometimes it feels like I have to talk like that because when I'm trying to talk to people, it seems that they don't understand and that I have to talk so slow as if I have a disorder like that of Steve in communicating to people. Oh, if you don't remember Steve and Malcolm in the Middle, he was the black guy in the wheelchair. Come on now, you got to remember Steve, okay? <laughs> anyway, uh, he was a mainstay. He it was just a, you know side cast member and all of a sudden people started appreciating them ladies and gentlemen please understand gout bone joint muscle disorders this is with so many people who have muscular dystrophy they go through stuff like that this has pay attention this has pay attention this has nothing to do with anything other than a so-called autoimmune disease. We know that muscular dystrophy was caused by scientists. It is not a natural disease, ladies and gentlemen. Muscular dystrophy is not a natural disorder. The same as the diseases that are being caused now by other scientific experiments, okay? Muscular dystrophy was created. Go ahead, and if you want my opinion, I think that was the Germans and the eugenics experiments. The same type of experiments that continue to the present day when the United States brought over all of the eugenic scientists from Germany and incorporated it into their warfare against the public and against other nations. Hey, they call it scientific research. So, ladies and gentlemen, the fact that I have to deal with this. Look at that. Perine metabolism. Uh, aw. I said lism, ism. Metabolism. I said metabolism. I apologize. Metabolism. And Duchenne. 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 
Duchenne knee, a muscular dystrophy, DMD. Duchenne muscular dystrophy. I have this, and I have another. Been diagnosed with two different types of muscular dystrophy. Primary manifestation, prognosis, muscle weakness, but there can be more organs that are progressively affected. The heart, the brain. Oh, no! So, for those of you who think, pay attention. Of what you're trying to do to me, you better think! All right, this thing ain't gonna let us go. No, I ain't accepting all cookies. Let, give me one thing. You, you gotta do this, ladies and gentlemen. You gotta hit reject. Okay, got to reject that junk. They, they make sure you ain't going to read nothing on their site. Muscular dystrophy is the most widely known muscular dystrophies. It is inherited as an X-link recessive trait. It becomes manifest only in males, and it is transmitted by whatever, females. Uh, mine was my father. Although there are exceptions, the primary manifestation is progressive muscle weakness and there are more organs than are uh yeah more organs that are progressively affected the heart and the brain primarily kidney liver heart brain we're not even going to talk about the lungs because the lung muscles okay the primary gene defect is unknown of course it is because it was created by scientists but there is increasing evidence to suggest an abnormal blah, blah, blah membrane leakage in the ATP receptors of the muscles as found in the case of DMD, Duchenne muscular dystrophy patients. Yes, you can see I've done my research into all of this a long time ago. So look, here's the thing. I don't want nobody feeling sorry for me. I don't want nobody Sitting up there trying to tell me, well, no, they, you know, they got some uh, cures for muscular dystrophy. I'm done. You know, they got cures. That's right. If they got a cure for muscular dystrophy, then go tell it to the Muscular Dystrophy Association. Oh, you didn't know that it exists? Yeah, there's this thing called the Muscular Dystrophy Association. If there is a cure for muscular dystrophy, uh, UCLA, the hospital that sent that experimental medication, Pump me with three vials of that medication that had been around since the 1960s? Yeah, that right there. Wait, why would I pay attention? Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Watch this, watch this. It's only two pages. There's an ebook, ladies and gentlemen. They want me to pay $16 for. Why would I do that? I don't want this right here either. Look, I can get this book right here. This is not a problem. I don't want this book. I already know this information. What I've been doing here is letting you know this is what I've been going through for the last four days. Normally it only lasts for about four days. I've been able to uh, bring it down to two days, but I would have to take a natural remedy of a tablespoon of baking soda with a glass of water. Literally. All I have to do is drink that one day and within two days, no more pain. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the most horrible, horrible taste in the world. I've heard of cholesterol that people used to, when we were kids, we heard of people taking cholesterol and stymie and uh, spanky and all of them used to <laughs> be on that TV show called The Rascals, little or not, and they would have to take cholesterol and, and they would always have that look on their face. Well, that's the look you'll get for taking baking soda and water. There is a chance that I may not have an opportunity or any other result um, if this thing lasts for beyond today. And so I just realized I probably will have to do that today because I don't feel like going through this pain because I'm stuck. I can't get anything done. I can sit on behind a computer, but it's distracting because I, I don't go through pain like most people. I tune my pain out. I don't take any pain relievers. I mentally tune the pain out. I can make all the pain go away. This is the pain that is so distracting that I can't get anything done because it takes too much of my effort to make the pain go away. I've learned to do that since I was in the hospital and they didn't give me any pain reliever. 
Now, what I've done today is I've let you know from several different aspects, but please understand, this is what I was doing the video for, to let some of you be aware of what I go through. Like I said, this the last time this has happened was four years ago. I've been able to keep it scathed off, but it does happen, and it does seem to be every four years. Four more years! Four more years! Anyway, um, but somebody in 2012, because I asked for it, somebody in 2012, I told him what I was going through. I had not gone through it before 2012. <laughs> because remember, 2008 was the diagnosis. And I was on all these stupid medications. I don't take medications anymore, people. Not because I don't really like medications. I'm anti-max. I'm an anti-medicationer. Yeah, anti-medicationer. If you can be an anti-vaccinator, then I could be an anti-medicationer. But I'm not an anti-medicationer. What I am, what I I am somebody. What I am, y'all, is a person who realized that the medications were only treating. Dun 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 the symptoms, and it wasn't actually treating the disease or the disorder. So I stopped treat, taking medications because if I take medication, guess what it causes? More symptoms! They're called adverse symptoms. Side effects. Side effects are adverse symptoms, people. That's why they're called symptoms. Adversely. <laughs> and because of that, I stopped taking it because I didn't want to deal with the adverse symptoms. Well, do you know if you didn't blah, 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 blah. Yes, I knew. That's why I stopped taking it. I need somebody who's going to treat the problem. So, all of you medical experts, as we get ready to go out of here, I got something for you. Okay? Because it's. I think it's important. I, I think it's important... Because all of you medical experts, y'all are important. Y'all are special. Y'all are somebody. Have a good day, everybody. Jethro, take them on out of here. Never do that, y'all. Tell him one more time. No, no, tell him one more time. Tell him one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we got to get ourselves on out of here. You special, you's important. Y'all special. Y'all somebody. Need some ap ap apple and chocolate pie and some, along with some apple, you need some apple to go with that chocolate pie. If I was talking to you, there would be no mistake in it, no question in it. And since I'm not saying that I wasn't talking to you, I'm sorry, baby. You made a mistake. Mama, no, mama, no. Mama, no. Mama, no, mama, no. All right, y'all take care, all right?